Shalom and Chag Sameach. It has been a year since I addressed the congregation at Kol Nidre. And what a year it has been, although certainly not what any of us would have projected. The past six months have been a challenge for us all, and there certainly have been bumps in the road. Several of our congregants became ill with COVID-19. Most have recovered, but sadly, we have lost at least one member to this modern day plague. I wish I could tell you that the worst is behind us, but none of us knows where the future will lead us. I would like to start off by asking for you to forgive any transgressions, slights, oversights, or insults that I may have done in the past year. I can assure you that they were unintentional, but if I have offended you, please accept my apology. Before I talk about where we are and where we are going, let me get the formalities behind us. This would not be a high holiday speech if I did not include a Yom Kippur appeal. Aside from dues and the rental paid by Phil's Academy, a significant part of our annual budget is raised at the high holidays, with the purchase of upgraded seats by the congregants and tickets to non-members. We also receive a sizable amount through men's club and sisterhood bingos. These sources of revenue have been decimated by the shutdowns necessitated by the current pandemic. Our other main source of revenue is the annual Kol Nidra appeal. Many of you have already submitted your pledge. A few have increased their pledge from last year, and I sincerely thank you. A few have also pledged a smaller amount this year, and additionally, there are some who have donated in the past, but have not yet committed for this year. For many people, this has been an economically challenging year, one that did not start out that way. Some have lost jobs or have had their income significantly reduced. And it is our policy to never turn away anyone for financial reasons. But if these individuals cannot contribute for good reason, we need others to step up to the plate. If you have not yet pledged an amount, please find a way to do so. If you've already made a pledge, is it possible to increase your pledge? When we sent out our high holiday mailing about two weeks ago, it included a virtual ticket that looks just like the high holiday tickets we send out every year including the pledge tabs at the top. You can use this ticket to indicate your new or increased pledge and send it back to the temple, or you can just call the temple office and speak with Sandy. So now that I have this out of the way, the real question is, why should you make a donation? In the past few months, I have paraphrased President Kennedy, ask not what your synagogue can do for you, ask what you can do for your synagogue. I've quoted Hillel, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? If I am for myself only, what am I? If not now, when? I have asked you to pay it forward, and I have appealed to our collective Jewish guilt. If you are not here for your synagogue now, your synagogue will not be here for you when you need us. But I want to take this opportunity now to tell you what your synagogue is doing. Like every other synagogue and religious institution in this country, and really the world, our normal everyday life has been turned upside down. Very quickly, we transitioned to Zoom meetings and then Zoom minions. We all hoped that, that the sanctuary closure would be short-lived, but that was not to be. Once it became apparent that this was going to be a long-term affair, we started working on implementation of live streaming of services. Our biggest delay was in getting a camera. We started planning for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and tried to keep alive the hope of having fully live services available well beyond the time when other synagogues had made the decision not to do so. But hope can only take you so far, and eventually we too made the only logical choice possible. These decisions have not been made in a vacuum. Rabbi Kiefer has, of course, been our Mara de Atra, guiding us in what is religiously permissible. We have had a high holly task force led by Dr. Steve Iskowitz, and of course we have based all decisions on what is scientifically safe for all concerned. I am sure that there's not one of you who is 100% happy with the decisions that have been made or what we wish could have been, but I can assure you that we considered all options. Not all is doom and gloom. Another, another quote I am fond of is, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade. And we have done just that. We started in April by converting many of our already scheduled programs to Zoom and Facebook Live, such as Yom HaShoah, and Dr. Robert Watson's talk on anti-Semitism. 
Rabbi Kiefer has given and continues to give talks and lead various services. In the past year, we had essentially no programming over the summer. Not true this year. With the hard work of Alana Manitoff and Julie Byrne, we scheduled multiple program programs. Access to the Berkshire Jewish Film Festival, a Zoom concert by Hudson Sounds, cooking classes from Barbara Wasser, and so forth. I must admit the babka I baked was delicious, but I also must confess that anything with chocolate is good. We hope that sometime in the near future, we will be able to partake of these offerings in person. But until then, our virtual programming is going full steam ahead. We will again be building a sukkah in our courtyard and we'll be offering reservations for time slots so that you and your family can come and sit in the sukkah, all while practicing appropriate physical distancing and safe behavior practices, giving you the opportunity to perform the mitzvah of dwelling in the sukkah, as well as being able to say the blessings over the lulav and etrog. We will continue to hold Shabbat and Yom Tov services with approximately 12 or so individuals in the synagogue to ensure a minion for Torah reading. Men's Club and Sisterhood schedule programs throughout the summer, and they're continuing to do so, be the virtual, or hopefully soon, live. Last year, after the holidays, I wrote a column and described about social action. Over the years, our social action activities seem to be withering away. I made an appeal to restart, or at least revitalize, our program. I was, and am, extremely happy that Steve Iskowitz and Sapir Roth responded to my request. They were diligently on putting their collective thoughts together and came up with a new initiative. We were in the full throes of implementation when the pandemic struck, and they put a halt to many of their plans. Yet despite this, they have pivoted and assisted in outreach to our congregants, holiday deliveries, and now with the holidays, assisted with the distribution of maxorim. We are also in the process of developing a shiva meal program, and we are reviving Bichor Cholim. Please stay tuned for more details in the near future. I might point out that these last two programs are only as good as the information your shul has. If we are not informed of someone's loss or illness, we cannot follow through. I used to joke with my patients that I missed the class on crystal ball reading. The same holds true for your synagogue. So what else does the future hold for us? Last year, we implemented a security fee as part of our dues to provide greater safety for our congregation. Additionally, we applied, for the third time, for a security grant from FEMA to improve our physical security. I am pleased to announce that we have been approved for this grant. We will have to pay for this up front, but assuming we fill out the paperwork and documentation correctly, we, we will be reimbursed for most, if not all, of this by FEMA. I expect the work on this to start in late winter or early spring, as there is a lot of additional documentation that must be filed with and approved by the government before we can begin. And of course, we all know that this is the last year that Rabbi Kiefer will be with us, as he will be returning to Israel at the beginning of next summer. We have been fortunate to have had his leadership for five years, but this phase of Temple Beth Am's history is drawing to an end. The search for a new rabbi is underway. Last May, we surveyed the entire congregation as to what we are looking for in our new rabbi. With the results in hand, the security committee, the search committee, has been working diligently on the rabbinical assembly's questionnaire. We have attended webinars from the United Synagogue of Conservative Judaism in regards to this process, and have received additional guidance from them. The finishing touches on the questionnaire are now being done and it is our plan to submit it immediately after Simchat Torah. We are excited about this process and look forward to finding the right candidate to lead us into the future. Please continue to join myself, the Executive Committee, and the Board of Directors, as well as the entire synagogue on this journey.